Okay, so today I want to go over a couple things uh, with the actual games family JAMA boards. We get a lot of uh, questions and stuff about them, how to program them, how to read map the buttons on the games and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go over and give you a quick overview today on how to do that. Uh, first, I just want to set some quick parameters about the board. One, so if you're going to program a board, it's got to, like the way I'm showing you in this video, it's got to look like this. This is a games family board. This one's the 2019. Um, they're become somewhat, I guess, obsolete. They've discontinued them for the next little while. They might bring them back. They might not. Uh, this has happened before, and then they pop back up again. There's the 1940 games family board, that type of thing. Being part of the games family, it's going to give you the square opening with the fan, that type of a thing. Um, then you're going to get into the 2100. It's not considered the games family because it is a newer version. It runs Windows 7 or something like that on it. And it's, uh, it's a dual core, so it's got a circular uh, uh, cutout on the actual top board. Uh, for you to let to let you know there's a couple little different variations of or a little couple differences with these ones this one allows for VGA and CGA so you can use it for a CRT monitor uh, this one also we've programmed it but the 1940 and stuff like that usually allows for a trackball and that kind of thing um, the 2100 the round version only allows for VGA out and um, it won't allow it won't accept a trackball at this time so until somebody figures it out so the quick little parameters that I want to talk to you about while while we're doing stuff is a lot of things during this video you're not going to be able to see me actually physically doing it so when I talk about dip switch 4 and going into service mode or um, maintenance mode there's a little switch on this little red um, dip switch block there's four on there uh, one two three four obviously they're numbered you want to switch number four to on, so up, when I say go into service mode. When I say to go out of service mode, you want that dip switch to go back to normal. Uh, I always leave this one, this dip switch number one here on. The reason why I leave it on is it allows you to coin in when you're in the game, uh, and it gives you the credits in the game instead of in the menu. Um, you can read the uh, manuals and stuff like that. We have some online. I will refer to them later in the video, um, but for now, the parameter when I'm talking about going into the back of the game machine to switch it into maintenance mode that was what I'm doing the other thing is this little controller board so it's a little add-on board uh, that comes with this board it's connected via ribbon cable from this slot to that slot the ribbon cable I think is about eight feet long so it'll give you more than enough room to uh, choose how to uh, or, or where to play with it. You can actually hold it in front of you instead of in my video, you'll probably see me lifting the console up and down. Um, it is a bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, um, I don't have to play with it too often, so it's not a big deal, but you can hold this out of the machine itself. So you can see how it's all labeled. The buttons that you're gonna be worrying yourself with are adjust two. That's where we're gonna start off. It's a bottom middle one. So there's adjust one, adjust two. That's going to get you into your main menu or um, for actually mapping the buttons in the main section. Okay. The other one that I'm going to talk about is escape. Now, escape, you might need it, you might not. Um, one of two things are going to happen in the menu. Um, if you choose a button, uh, a button mapping, and you press the wrong button, to erase that, you have to select it again like you're going to map the button, and you have to press this escape button. Now, if you press the escape button and it gives you a second option, so the options or the buttons that you're inputting into that section for the button mapping gets longer and longer and longer and longer, uh, then you'll have to do the opposite, which I'll say in the video as well, which is for you to uh, move on to the next one, select it properly, then go back to the other one and it'll reset itself. So you may or may not have to use the reset button. Um, the other one is your setup button. So that's going to get you into the setup menu, and then uh, you only have to press that one once at the end, right before you save your changes. Now, um, for this demo and this this setup, for the purposes of it only, you're only going to be using those three buttons maximum. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you see that up close um, before we start going to the other stuff, because it'll look like I'm moving fast, and you're just going to have to listen to my explanation uh, after now that you know where I'm actually playing around with on these boards themselves. So, uh, yeah, we're going to move over and get that part of it done, and uh, hopefully we educate you a little bit today. Thanks. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to blast through this fairly quickly, so hopefully uh, I can get it through to you here properly in a, in a real fast way. But uh, 
This thing shouldn't be shouldn't be hard, but for some reason, if you miss a little step or anything like that, it can become very very frustrating. So make sure you familiarize yourself with this and get one game working 100%. Then go do one another one before you do a bunch of changes on a bunch of different games. Because some people try to get ahead of themselves and fix two or three, five, ten games, whatever it is, um, and then go and save. I usually try to save after every game that I do and make sure that it's fully tested and stuff, and then go from there. Um, you'll see when I'm done this, the process of saving takes a very long time. So <clears throat> we're going to start off with your action button is player one and your other action is player A. So what works for player one right now for you to select everything, it's going to change over and it's going to work for that. The button that's going to make that work is going to be uh, your button A. Your joystick is going to allow you to choose uh, directions up and down to select everything and that's it. So two buttons, joystick up and down, that's it. Okay. So we're going to zoom out, go to the main menu. <coughs> While I do that, what I'm going to do is put the board into service mode. That's flipping dip switch four, number, uh, number four up to on position. That will allow us not only to get into the game, but get into the actual um, main menu in the background. So to do that, now that that's on and I'm in the game, I'm going to hit that adjust to button that I showed you earlier on the little mini board, the attachment board with the IDE cable. And then that's going to bring up Input general, this game, a couple other options. The dip switches on there, uh, that allows you to change stuff out for difficulty settings, lives, that kind of a thing on some of the games. Uh, bookkeeping info and game information is nothing. Slider controls just depends on what game it is. Video options, it'll just give you low res, medium res, and high res, and like VGA, that kind of stuff. Uh, select a new game, return to game. Uh, obviously, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, in input general is inputs for the MAME emulator itself uh, that's running these games, but it's only for that version. So there's on this one, there's almost 3,000 games on it. There's probably about four or five different versions of MAME. So if I mess with this one, it might mess with random games that I don't know what I'm playing with. So um, uh, you're probably better off doing one game at a time as you find them being a problem, if they are a problem. Uh, input this game. That's what you're going to go to. That's your go-to. I'm going to hit my action button, which is the player one button. And now that I'm in this menu, I want to turn my service mode off. Um, the reason why I want to turn it off is because every selection that I make from now on in this menu, if that's if that is turned on still, that dip switch being on acts as a shift button. So basically, instead of hitting one, I'm hitting shift in one, and it's giving me an exclamation mark, that type of a thing, um, to make it very simplistic. But um, yeah, so now this is where the action button changed. So now uh, player one isn't my action button. I'm playing and pressing it, it's doing nothing. Now it's button A. So player one start, while we're looking up there, I go OK. I want to make sure that I'm good to go um, with the changes that I'm making. So I'll hit player one button again, or player one start. So we'll hit it, player one start. Um, uh, I did that on purpose here where it's gonna show you two things. So I'll do it again and I'll make another button. So now it just keeps adding to the cause here, which kind of sucks because you're never gonna hit three buttons at the same time. And even if you do, this thing won't recognize it. Uh, you can only have one setting in each option at any given time. So to make sure that you clear that out, because if you keep pressing the button and pressing something else, it's just going to keep adding things to it. You want to hit the escape button on your mini keyboard. Okay? Or not. There you go. So, you got air player one start, player two start. Try not to mess these up because you don't want to keep going back to what I was telling you there. Let's see, I did it twice. Go down. Player three start. I'm going to redo this one. There you go. If you leave it alone for a bit and go back, it'll work just like the escape button. If you're hitting the escape button and it's giving you an option and making it longer and longer and longer, then just go to the next one, program that one, then go back to the other one and it'll reset itself. Um, sometimes these things can be a little bit picky. Uh, you're going to have to try to play around to find out what works best for you. Uh, but this is the basic 
set up for the menu, it does change a little bit. There are variations, um, but the secret of it is is that you're turning that um, that service mode button, the dip switch, you're turning that on and off when you're in these modes because I find that that does uh, act as a shift button most of the time and it just really screws up your settings. Uh, so point one, point two, or whatever, point two, go back again because I pressed the same button. There you go. Okay, so my coins are good. I know that's all good. Um, player one, button one. Uh, it's going to be the same button I'm using for my action button, which is fine. When so you're in this menu, it shouldn't matter. Uh, button two, I'm just going to do the top three because it's ABC. Now, I'm pretty sure the direction thing works because I can tell because I got joy one up, joy two up and then the three up and down or whatever. Um, since it's a four player, um, this one has to give you some extras. So we're gonna leave that alone. If they don't work, I'll go back in and save them again as well. But joy one up, joy one down, joy one left. I'm getting the same repeat here. So I know that they'll probably work. These buttons will probably work for my player two. I'm just gonna do them again anyway on those ones. You can go through every single one and make it the way you want it. So if it's joystick right or left, you hit the right, you hit the left. It works just like the button. Through it again. I'm going to do it here because they're not in the same thing, so I'm going to make sure that this is the way it's working just for this demo. Uh, so I go OK, and then 3 up, I hit up, and it says Joy 3 up. So I knew that, that now we know that that wasn't going to work. So we hit OK, down, getting down. That's left. And we go down. Right. Player three button one. Player three button two. And finish it off. Okay. So now I'm done. I'm happy with where we're at. I want to get out of this menu. Still, the action button is player is uh, player one A button. Return to menu. Go up. Guide yourself to return to game go into the game. Now, you can test it really quick right here. Um, that's the beautiful part of this one. So you hit, you know, coin one, coin one, coin one, coin two, coin three. Now they're all working. Press player start, start, start. It's working. Um, now if you can bypass this, you can make sure all the directions are working, make sure everything's good. Okay, so far so good. So these guys couldn't even coin in and stuff last time. Looks like it's working perfectly. Before I get out of this game, I want to turn it, the service mode off again. Um, or, yeah, I have it off. It's good, sorry. Losing track of my own stuff. So you want to get out of this menu or out of this game by holding your player one button. Now that you're in the game, it will take over to what it normally did before. Um, you have to turn service mode on now. I didn't mean to confuse you on that last one. Um, but um, you go and use the setup button like I showed you before on that little extra on the extension of the board there. And then you go down to config files. Yes. And go to save configuration. It'll ask you if you want to continue. Hit yes. This saving configuration is going to take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes. Uh, expect it to take quite a while. I'm not going to let you wait while that happens. Um, I'm going to shut this down, we'll come back and I'll go over it from where we left off. Alright, so this took about 7 minutes or so. I've seen it take it like 10 minutes and that kind of sucks a little bit. So if you're doing it for every game, um, that's why I was saying you want to perfect it once or twice before you go ahead and try to... Because you can, you can go in and out of games and save a whole bunch of configurations all at once. So you do five, ten, whatever games. So if you find three or four or whatever, I would just do them one at a time, familiarize yourself with it, um, and go from there. So I still have uh, the service mode on. I'm just going to get out of these menus, uh, exit back into where I am at for the game. I'm going to turn service mode off. Now service mode is off. 
Now I'm just going to try playing the game and test it. So we've got to wait a couple seconds for it to load. Um, in the meantime, I might as well suggest that uh, if you have one of these boards, whether you got it from us or not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you go to our website under our game list link, um, we have a manual in there for this that we recreated because the manuals that come with these boards, um, they say things like, please press button discontinuously and things like that. So it's kind of a, a really bad translation to English from Chinese. Um, so we've redone it so that it's an easy read for you. Now you can see everything's coined in perfectly. Uh, I'm going to try to select everybody and see if we're good to go. Looks like we're good to go. I'm going to play a couple of uh, play a couple of the characters and make sure they're all working properly. Okay, so those buttons work on player one. Yeah, I get a little dance in there. Okay, those are working. It's working so far so good. Test player three. So if it worked when you were in service mode, when you got out of making the changes themselves, um, then if you get out of that service mode um, to get out of the game before you get out of, make sure you're out of service mode before you get out of that game no matter what. Uh, otherwise, if you're still in service mode and you get out, it basically erases everything you just did. So that, that's one of the major keys. The other one is, is playing with that uh, service mode uh, switch when you're actually in the menu for the MAME. I always turn it off for that. So um, yeah, once you do that, it's just kind of a quick fix all the way around. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or any concerns, anything like that on how to program these games and stuff, feel free to uh, contact us on our, uh, on our YouTube channel or via email directly through our website. You can call us. Uh, our numbers listed on our website, that type of thing. We'll try to support you as much as we can. Uh, if you didn't buy the board from us, please just contact us through email. Uh, we'll direct you to either more videos or we'll give you some more advice, that type of a thing. Um, and look at some of the comments below. Uh, we might have solved your problem already, hopefully. Um, these things are uh, a little bit temperamental, but once you get used to that, um, you'll be able to work around it. And hopefully I gave you some tips and tricks to make it a little bit better. Booyah.